Good morning, First Calvary members and friends, and those of you who are listening to me today. Good morning. I have several announcements that I'd like to make. First of all, I want to acknowledge our women's ministry headed by our Deaconess Alice Long and our Deaconess Cecilia Lane, who works alongside her in this ministry. Every year, the second Sunday, December, we honor our seniors. We honor them because we believe that they deserve to be honored. They are the shoulders on which we stand and we appreciate their dedication and commitment to our church. This year, as every year, Deaconess Cecilia Lay makes sure that our seniors get gifts for Christmas. This year was no different. Not only did they give gifts to our seniors, but they didn't forget about Pastor and myself. So again, we thank Deaconess Alice Long and Deaconess Cecilia Lane for their commitment to this ministry and to the membership of First Calvary Church. Secondly, I want to thank Sister Lisa Bryant, who heads our hospitality ministry. I thank her, along with all the members, for the wonderful tea party we had on last Saturday via Zoom. And guess who the guest of honor was? Yours truly. I thank them so much for remembering me. This ministry, along with the guidance of God, we instituted two years ago, so this was our second anniversary. And we had such a marvelous time. We had such a wonderful program, and I thank each and every one of you. But do you know what the honey was in this tea? My daughter in love, the Reverend Cherie Jones, who did such an awesome job. She's always so uplifting and so inspiring. So again, thank you, Reverend Cherie Jones. And lastly, from our home to your home, we say God bless you and have an enjoyable Christmas day. Most of all, we want you to stay safe. And so that next year this time, hopefully we can meet with our loved ones and family members. We're praying and we know that God can turn this situation around and it can be so. So again, be safe, I love you. And I'm sending this great big hug to each and every one of you right now. Again, continue to be blessed. A great God deserves a great praise. We are grateful to God once again, for God has been a keeper. And we are well aware that if God doesn't keep us, we cannot be kept. Thank God for him keeping us. Today, we want to we want to talk about you matter to God. You matter to God. And our text comes from the book of Luke, the first chapter. We read as follows from the 26th to the 28th verse. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly faithful. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Amen. And in the second chapter of the book of Luke, the 10th through the 14th verse, we read as follows. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace 
goodwill toward men. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Lord, use us today in this sermon that persons might see more of thee and less of me. You matter to God. Amen. The archangel Gabriel must have scratched his head at this one. He wasn't one to question his God-given missions, why he was the instrument that God used to send lightning bolts on the Sodom and Gomorrah. He was the one that God used to have the Egyptians swallowed up in the Red Sea. He was the one that God used to facilitate the 40 years of wandering to loosen the stiff necks of the Israelites. Why, he was the one that God used to shut the mouth of lions there for Daniel in the lion's den. Why, when God sent, Gabriel went. And when word got out that God was to become a man, no doubt Gabriel was so happy, he was excited. He could envision the moment, the Messiah in a blazing chariot, the king descending on a fiery cloud, an explosion of light from which the Messiah would emerge. That's what he expected, but what he never expected was that God would come as a baby. God gave him a slip of paper with a Nazarene address. It read, tell the mother, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Do not be afraid. Blessed art thou among women. Now, Gabriel had seen babies before. Why, he was the platoon leader when Moses was born in the bulrush operation. But it was hard for him to understand God as a baby. Well, that's okay for human beings, he thought. But God, no doubt the heavens could hardly contain him. So how in the world could a human body, babies must be carried and fed and bounced and bathed. He couldn't imagine some mother bouncing and burping God on her shoulder. So Gabriel scratched his head. What happened to the good old days, the Sodom and Gomorrah stuff, the flooding of the globe, the flaming sword, that's the action that he liked, but Gabriel had his office. Take the message to Mary. No doubt he thought, Mary must be some kind of special girl. He assumed it as he traveled, but Gabriel was in for another shock. One peep told him that Mary was no queen, the mother-to-be of God was not regal or royal. She was a Jewish peasant girl who still had acne on her face and had a crush on a guy named Joe. And speaking of Joe, why, he's a carpenter. Look at him over there. Sawdust in his beard, a nail aping around his face. You mean to tell me that the savior of the world, our God, would have dinner with this guy every night? You're telling me that our God is going to call this guy dad? You're telling me that a common laborer was going to be in charge of rearing God? It was all Gabriel could do from going back to God for further instruction. But he did not question God. When God said go, Gabriel went. Well, only heaven knows how long he fluttered above Mary, before he took a breath and broke the news, but he did. He told her the name, his name. He told her the plan. He told her not to be afraid, and he left and reported back to headquarters. But nine months later, he came again. He saw some shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and he came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were afraid. And Gabriel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that, my friends, 
is the chronology of Christmas. Let me summarize it for you. The message of Christmas is that you matter to God. My God, you matter to God so much that he sent his only begotten son to save your life. That's the message of Christmas. And that's God's Christmas gift to you. The angel Gabriel said, do not be afraid. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. Today, your Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. Give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace among people. And I think this is so significant because the very first word that Gabriel said to people when Jesus is born is don't be afraid. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. God does not want us to be afraid of him. That's why he comes as a baby. And so there's some gifts that you and, you and I are entitled to as a result of Jesus' coming. First of all, accept God's gift of happiness. The angel said, I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. He says, I want you to be happy. God is not some cosmic killjoy in the sky waiting to make your life miserable. A lot of people think that when you become a believer that you ought to, you ought to be bored all the time. You see, my friends, that's not what God is saying to us. We got a misconception that God doesn't want us to enjoy ourselves, but the what what I hear God saying, I'm a God of joy. I hear him say, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I hear him say, you and I got something to rejoice over. I don't know where some folks think that if you become a Christian, you ought to be solemn. Every now and then, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Why? In, in the hundred psalm, it said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the Lord, that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. God wants you to be happy. He wants you and I to enjoy our life. He gave us this beautiful playground called the earth and he said, go ahead and enjoy it. Let us drink deep of life. God doesn't want you to be sad. He wants you to have some joy. So not only accept God's gift of happiness, but also accept God's gift of hope. Gabriel said, today, your Savior is born. And I saw a Christmas card that said, if our greatest need had been for information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been for technology, God would have sent us a computer scientist. If our greatest need had been for money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been for pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was for forgiveness. And so God sent us a savior, a savior who gives us forgiveness from our past, freedom from the problems that plague our present and fulfillment in eternity. Forgiveness, freedom, and fulfillment. And with these three, you and I got the gift of hope because hopelessness, is one of the scourges of humanity. It's an attack by the devil, for God has promised that whatever we're going through, that he'd see us through. Hallelujah. I hear him say, God will supply our every need according to his riches in glory. I hear him say, I was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I hear God say in his word, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that means, my friends, that whatever it is, you can hope on anyhow. You can't live life without hope. There's a vast difference between hopeless end and endless hope. Hope tells us a brighter day is coming. Hope says, hold on and hold out just a little while longer. 
these old heavy burdens, they will soon pass over. Run the race, keep the faith. Our change will come. Our change will come. I don't care where you stand in this COVID-19 crisis. If you hang on with God, God will bring you out. I'll have a amen and a hallelujah go right there. Hallelujah, yes. Proverbs 10, 28, the A section says, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. And so joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Re relax, I hear him say, and accept my gift of hope. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior of the world. John 3, 17 said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but rather to save the world. He did not come to put us down. He came to lift us up. So not only are we to accept God's gift of happiness and accept God's gift of hope, but we are invited to accept God's gift of harmony. For the archangel Gabriel said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. God wants you to have a good relationship with other people, not just with him, why, he says, I want you first to get your life straight with me. Then you can get your life right with other people. Christmas is a time to break down barriers, and Christmas is a time for reconciliation, to build bridges, to restore relationships that have been damaged. It's time to say, I'm sorry. Will you, will you forgive me? For many people, Christmas is a very tense time because it means dealing with relatives. You have unresolved issues with friends. Christmas is a time for reconciliation. Why the Bible says in 1 John 4, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God in whom he has not seen? And this commandment that we have from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Hallelujah. Some of you are saying, but you don't know what they did to me. I can never forgive them. That's, that's why you need Jesus Christ. For human forgiveness and human love runs out. But God's love never runs out. You see, my friends, I've never been surprised by God's judgment. But I'm still stunned by his grace. God's judgment is right, but he doesn't make mistakes. Raining fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah, yes. The Egyptians swallowed in the Red Sea, they had it coming. Forty years in the wilderness, they wouldn't obey. Ananias and Sapphira holding out on God, you bet. But God's grace is hard to fathom and gift difficult to get your arms around. David, the psalmist, becomes David, the murderer. My sin is ever before me. And then I hear him say, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And by grace, he has a heart after God's own heart. That's grace. Peter, before the crop closed, denied he ever knew him. Rock man Peter, he denied him. But Jesus forgives him and tells him to feed my sheep. And he preached one day at Pentecost, and 3,000 souls came running. Grace, Zacchaeus the crook, the cleanest part of his life was the money he stole. But Jesus took time with him. He, that's, that's amazing grace. The thief on the cross held bent and hung out to die one minute, and the next minute heaven bound and smiling. All because of grace, God's unmerited favor. Jesus stopped dying and sailed that man's soul back to the seat of eternity and told the angels to wait tables on him. I'll be back this afternoon. Story after story and prayer after prayer and surprise after surprise. God is looking for ways to save us. I challenge you to find one soul who came to God seeking grace 
and did not find it. Search the pages, read the story, envision the encounter. Find one person who came seeking a second chance and left with a stern lecture. I dare you to find it. You won't find it. And if God can forgive you of all of your sins, your sins, if God can forgive you of all of your sins, why, you can forgive others of what they have done against you. And if you want to make it in, you have to forgive your brother of their sins. You have to forgive as much as lying within you. You got to live peaceably with all mankind. And that, my friends, is the gift of Christmas. Accept God's gift of happiness. Accept God's gift of hope. And accept God's gift of harmony. Christmas is best seen and presented in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christmas is about the greatest lover, the greatest love, the greatest giver, and the greatest gift. If you have Jesus, my God, you can have a Merry Christmas. You may not have money in your pocket. You may not have any gifts under the tree. You may not have a tree at all, but you can still have a Merry Christmas. There may not be festivities around your house. Nobody may stop by and visit, but you can still have a Merry Christmas. You may not hear from the one you love. You may not receive any cards at all, but you can still have a Merry Christmas because the making of your day is not based on what people have to say because Jesus is the reason for the season. And so you can sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. You can sing, oh, Come, let us adore him. You could sing Silent Night and Holy Night. You could sing Hop the Heralds, Angels Sing, all by yourself. You can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing because he loved me. I sing because he gave his life for me. I sing because he saved me and washed me and redeemed me and healed me. I sing because they hung him high for me and stretched him wide for me and dropped him low. He died until death died, got up on resurrection morn with all power in his hands. And so, yes, I can sing because my faith is fixed. My salvation is sure. And because he came, all the way from heaven down to see about me and traveled up the Dia Della Rosa. Oh my God, and what he done for me. And so one day Gabriel will receive the final orders, blow the trumpet and time will stand still and the dead in Christ shall rise. Oh yes, on that great getting up morning, when the sun will drip away in blood and the moon and stars will pause and King Jesus, our Savior, will be there. Oh, yes, when the saints go marching home. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching home. Hallelujah, yes. My brothers and sisters, the doors of the church is open. Come by letter, candidate for baptism, Upon Christian experience, Jesus is called. If you have heard these words and you feel the movement of God in your heart, I invite you to call 718-453-1278. Tell Deaconess Kareen Griffin, put your name on the church roll and tell God, Put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus is calling. Hallelujah, yes. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. 
only what you do for him will be counted in the end. Hallelujah. The doors are open. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we're asking every person, every member, all our friends to support this ministry. We need your support. And we might be able to sustain this ministry through this pandemic. And so I'm asking everybody who can, who will, be liberal in your giving. There are four ways that we have provided that you might support this ministry. We ask, oh God, that all of us might support it. Don't talk about I'm going to do it tomorrow. Do it today. Do it right now. Call and do what you can that you might be able, that this ministry might be able to sustain itself, pay its expenses through this pandemic. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Now, may the grace of our Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these are your people, both now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.